There you go, you can talk. Hello. You're going to sing. Hello. You're going to sing me a song. Yeah. Indiana, talking, talk. Okay, what are you going to say? Say, hello, I'm Indiana. Hello. Hello, my name's Indiana. No? Okay, you're done, are you? Okay, thank you. The All Seeing Guys podcast is part of Britpod Scene, an independent network of uniquely British podcasts that's always growing. Check out BritpodScene.com or follow BritpodScene on Twitter to find out. Welcome to episode 134 of All Seeing Guys of Greg and Joe. I'm, of course, I'm Greg, and I'm joined by... Obviously, Joe Jackson. Joe, obviously, Joe Jackson. How are we doing? A, why have you turned into a radio DJ? You know what? I've kind of picked up with Indiana. She keeps doing it. She's changing her voice. We're in Iceland today, and she's like, I think we need to get some chocolate cake. <laughs> like, she's... <laughs> Fair. Out of nowhere, right. she, just, oh, she just started doing it, and I think I just started catching it from her. That's a good enough reason. Yeah, she start, you know, I'm obviously influencing her uh, vocal uh, vocals, and I think now it's turning the other way as well. Cheeky Lovely. girl. Lovely. Um, yeah, episode 134. Here we are, uh, still over the Skype waves during you know ever crazy world outside. At the moment, it's more the weather that's been a bit nuts. Yeah, more than yeah. anything, I mean, hasn't it? I mean, it's a bit. It's a nicer now. <laughs> It's yeah, it's definitely cool in that. It's so weird because everyone's getting such different weather over a small area. Yeah. Like I was just like, oh, it's gonna be a big storm. Awesome. And it kinda didn't really happen. But then people down the road, like, you know, down by Richmond Way, were like flooded. Like I saw videos of streets flooded and really? houses and yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, man. Like I know people put up videos of nearby of like crazy lightning. Whereas well, I did have lightning here, but it was more flashes and then just really loud thunder then it kind of just went away it was blue skies again like didn't we stick around it was uh yeah i mean it was it was damn hot damn oh, yeah hot. man damn yeah 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 when really it was like hot. what like 4 p.m and it was like 34 degrees it was just like there's yeah. no end to this i think it was no. uh i said i said to lucy i said it was just like you know what's bad about it is that it's there's no escaping it no no i was at chesham world adventures wednesday and it was crazy hot <sighs> Like right up it, and I, that was meant to start storming like during the day, and it didn't happen. No. Um, and then we got a little bit of thunder and lightning in the evening, a little bit, and then it was gone. A little bit of rain, and then it was gone. It was still proper, proper hot. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's the night I seen the picture of me with the ice flannel on my head. Yeah. Lizzie just put Lizzie just put a bunch of flannels in the freezer, and it was. Um, I'd actually even put mine on my head, honestly, till about ten at night or something, half nine or ten at night. I put it on, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> you just let it melt on your head. Yeah, I had it on my leg, had it on my ankles for a bit, then I was like holding it on my <laughs> chest, like it was really good. By the time I got mine out, Lizzie was popping hers back in for a top up. I'll tell you, mate, you should and put we, a towel uh, in there. Yeah, well, put a towel in the bag, put it in the fridge or freezer, right? You can stick it in your bed. Yeah, we did put the flannel in in Indiana's um, pillowcase. Nice on the freezer because obviously it's boiling hot in her her room as well. Oh, mate, I was, you know, this this weather as well really just reminds me how like hot, like or how much heat comes off like a laptop or like a TV screen. TV. Oh, yeah, man, my TV gives off crazy heat. I had like, yeah, I was like, during the week, I was just sweating bullets playing Call of Duty, and I was just like, it's not (laughs) worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, 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 I was doing the same. I'd get out of the shower and I'd like come downstairs and I'm like, I stink. Like, and you've known me for a, a, a many numbers of years. Like, I'm not a BO person. Very no, rare. No, no, like, I've, like, I've got that covered out of the two of us. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't usually smell. But honestly, like five minutes after being in the shower, I was like, I actually smell. <laughs> I can smell it. And all I've done is walk downstairs and I'm like dripping with sweat. I had a, I did I had a shower to cool off and I just felt hotter afterwards and I was just like because you're like the, sweating during the, the shower. What's the point of all of this? I mean, I still think the hottest I've actually been wasn't was the day 
last week when I saw you and Ed and I got the bus back and like none of the windows opened and it was that crazy heat starting yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. sending you guys pictures and it was like my the, my mask was just soaked because I sweated through it on yeah. the bus. That, that was, I f- honestly, one of the most uncomfortable like eight minutes whatever of oh, my mate. life <laughs> like you know it was what? so I would have walked I'd have been like you know what it's a, it's an eight minute bus rider it's like a 40 minute walk <laughs> I think I'll put, take the walk but now I was going to walk I remember what I did I think the bus just pulled up and I was like oh screw it like I'm just gonna jump on the bus and get I'm just gonna get the get the quick journey over with but I had no idea it was gonna be that hot on there because the windows weren't opening it was a horrendous horrendous journey home but then it just stayed that way for like the next week just insane heat the following yeah. on that bus the whole time hot hot um, hot yeah, really hot. Um, we shouldn't complain, the, but it's what we do as a nation. I, yeah, it is, but it's like, I, I like sun. I don't like complaining about the sun. I don't like the sun, I like it being hot. And to be honest with you, I haven't really, I'm not really complaining, I'm just saying it's very hot. But yeah, that, it's, uh, bus it's, ride, it's not that bus ride it's was like being tortured. That bus ride was like I was being tortured. Just, uh, and it's uh, more tough just, when I'm out. Just, of, just making a statement, that's all it is. Yeah. And it's more tough, like, of Indiana, because obviously she can't cope with it as well. She has been very good, but it is very hard, and it does yeah. get tired and a bit ratty. And then you get ratty because they're getting ratty, and you're, like, trying to talk to them, you're just sweating with your face. <laughs> um, obviously, off the back of that little uh, discussion there, saying I saw you and Ed last week, we yes. uh, we went to a pub. We did, for the first time. We, we went uh, to a pub. We visited uh, the Wagon and Horses. We did, yes. One of our one of our favourites. Yeah, booked a, Ed booked a table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny actually. Well, I'll, I'll tell the the story from my arrival, and then Joe, who's who cracked the case, can uh, can, can finish it off. But I right, we were meeting at where the time it was, like six or something. Yeah. Um, Joe had already met Ed, so they were heading down. I probably got there about ten minutes after them. And I arrived and the guy was, I was like, oh, my mate's already got a table booked. They're already up back. And he's like, all oh, right, if they're already out there, if you go, just scan this and give us your track and trace number. Cool. Went up back and you guys were like, tucked in the corner. And I was surprised. It was very busy. Yeah, yeah. And you guys that's were, the like, busiest I've seen it. Yeah. And you guys were tucked in the corner. And I sat down and went, oh, we're here, are we? And Ed's like, oh, you know, we're being punished. Oh, we weren't happy. They didn't have a table booked for Ed. So they they were trying to in, you know say that maybe we hadn't actually phoned, or they tried to say he'd phoned the wrong wagon and horses, which is ridiculous. Um, so we were sat. Well, no, no, apparently the table. there was like another wagon and horses though, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I googled it. Not not close enough for that to be. In. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so me, you, so me, Joe, and Ed are sat at this little corner table. It's really hot and stuff, and then uh, kind of moaning about where we're sat. And then uh, yeah, Joe, <laughs> what did you do? How did you fix the situation? So yeah, so. It was a bit of a weird sort of scenario, and um, I yeah, Ed Ed called up during the week to uh, secure a table, and it was just like they'd asked. And him, that's you know, it, isn't it? It's 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 new pub problems. This yeah, is a new yeah, yeah. A new, new, not new just, pub problems. Not just showing up and hoping there was a table. Now you have to pretty much book a table. It's a new pub problem to have. Yeah. Sorry, continue. So yeah, Ed called up and the, and they asked him, you know, what uh, what name do you want to have uh, have it under? And he was just like, oh, uh, put Ed and Joe. And it was like, all right, sweet, done, sorted. We'll we'll turn up there. So me and him walk down there at six or like you know ten to six or whatever. And yeah. he's like, oh, I've got a I've got a name under a, I've got a table under Ed uh, or Ed and Joe. And uh, the guy's there. He's looking through. He's just like, no, there's, no, there's nothing here. But don't worry, it's all right. We've got we've got a table available. You can take that. And I was like, brilliant. So we walk out and we're in the hut, which is just as hot as anything. Yeah. Um, and we're sort of like really tucked away. Um, and it's just like, ugh. By like a baby, we're in the baby, not a baby shower, but there was like a newborn baby. Yeah, like, there was, was like a newborn family. Like right and there. we were like, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a funny situation. But then, so we, we get up, we're there for about what, like 20 minutes? 20 minutes. We, the, the whole situation had been rectified by 20 past six. Cause I was <laughs> checking. So I'd, I'd got up uh, to go and get some menus. And on the way, I, I saw a table that was empty and it said on it like six o'clock. And I was like, oh shit, that's, that's, it, that's a coincidence. And then I saw the name and it said Evan J. And I was like, ah, oh, bollocks. Um, so I was just like, look, I, I sort of I was back and forth I was thinking oh like I, at the bar I thought someone turned up and was like oh I'm here now sorry sorry and I thought that was Evan J um, bloody Evan J and then I, th- I kept just sort of saying Evan J in my head and I was like Evan J Ed Evan Eden Eden J and I was just like <laughs> I was just like boys I fucking cracked it 
And basically, the the result of it was that the guy had misheard fucking Ed on the phone and put <laughs> down his reservation as Evan J. And uh, thank God been we a, had said something. <laughs> such a mix up. And then so yeah, Ed Ed went bowling in to speak to the staff, and they were just like, you know, just take it. We don't, no, we don't care. <laughs> thank God, because it was a much better table. It was it was like one of the tables we commonly sit at. Yeah, yeah, it was much better. It was perfect. But that's yeah. hilarious that they mistook you, <laughs> took Ed and Joe's name as Evan J. Oh, so now, I mean, now can, that, that that's you, now that's now what the pseudonym for us. When you Evan say J. Yeah, when you say it back to yourself, you kind of get it, like Evan. Yeah, Ed yeah, yeah. And, like, but yeah. So we, I I, bu- I booked a table there today for us tomorrow, and I was just like, "I want to have a name, please." And I was like, "Greg." <laughs> So I bet tomorrow they're going to be like, no, nope, haven't got a Greg, got Derek. Egg on. Yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even say a surname, we just went Greg. Just Greg. You can't get it wrong. Just Greg, please. You can't, well, you can you get it wrong because you can spell it like you can spell it like the bakery. But you know what? I don't, if I say it and don't expect it to you, that's fine. That doesn't bother me. I can't, I can't hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, it was a funny first experience really, wasn't it? Like, I mean, nothing's, nothing's really changed. It's just everyone's just sort of, Slightly more cautious about oh yeah, touching like, there's, each other. there's like the plastic, you know, sheets, like the perfect yeah, they got the sheets, like glass, you know, like over, saying over that the though. bar, which was just, just rocking. Like yeah. the guy next but, to me was like serving someone across from me, and the guy serving me leaning over me, and he kept knocking his head on it, swinging back and forth. Like I, when I was there, there was someone, there was someone stood at the at the plastic bits, and someone like one of the bartenders just sort of like leaned around the side and was just like, "Can I help?" So we weren't even using the plastic protectors. Like. <laughs> So ridiculous, but yeah, man. Yeah. As a, as as first pub experiences go, it wasn't too bad. And also, uh, bad. yesterday the the fighting cocks reopened. I saw that fighting cocks reopened. Yeah, look, look, I saw a few, I saw their tables outside as Back well. Back up and running. I mean, I saw their tables outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, rag and horses. We stayed with some food, we had some pizza. Um, I want to fucking obviously say that I had an amazing pizza last week. I don't know. I've been obviously doing my. Uh, eating Ting's crisp reviews of Indiana. But last week, I've been looking forward to trying this pizza and I've seen a lot of people hyping it up. So oh. I did a review of that. I even started at the very beginning. I have started my review just by... Because I couldn't find them on Just Eat or anything. So I went straight to their website and um, ordered it through their website. And a Just Eat guy did show up to give it to me. But um, <laughs> ordered it on their website. And I went through the process of looking through their website. I love... They're called... Um, I always forget the name. They're called Mickey Marzano. Mickey Marzano Pizza. They're based in Epson or Roxy Lane. And uh, it's like the, the the pizzas they have are like how they want to do pizzas, how they think they should be done. So there's no like large, small, medium. It's all 13-inch pizzas. You know, how, how, pretty much the size you usually make them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about that same size you would make a pizza. Um really really nice it will and and the way they describe them all and they describe all the ingredients they use which are all fresh all the ingredients they use they kind of just say why they're using them why this one doesn't have mozzarella because you know the original doesn't why this has then he's got his special ones and he has a whole one after the book he made the alchemist which i've, I've actually one of the books i've actually read oh, uh, nice. it was inspired by that they've got a dessert pizza which i wouldn't eat but they have one it's nutella pizza with like strawberries yeah, yeah. um I had a pepperoni one. I just went basic and I heard how good the garlic bread was. So I did a garlic bread and it was like a most phenomenal fucking pizza. It was so nice. Nice. Uh, they like drawn little dis- drawings in the lids of the box and stuff. And I did my review. I posted it. And like later on that, that night, they replied to me saying how much they loved it. It was their first review like, like that. And they actually obviously watched the whole thing because the guy was saying you actually said exactly what we want to, you know, when you said they're making pizzas the way where they think they should be made, that's exactly what we're going for. So I'm so glad you said that. It was really that's nice cool. to get feedback for once. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, they replied on the All Seeing Guys one, actually, on the All Seeing Guys uh, page about it. Um, big old message they sent back, so they were really happy with it. Not, 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 not that I, would, I didn't expect to hear him back at all, but was, it was nice to hear something back from someone when you review their yeah. food. I guess because uh, really... it's, it's clearly like a, a new venture and stuff, so maybe. So they've been there sort of... eighteen months. It's, they've been oh, really? there eighteen months, but I suppose it's been a tough start for them with like you know lockdown and what have you. Yeah, and I mean, like you surviving well, yeah, for the that. last eight months we've been limited. Yeah, it's been a bit crazy, but um, yeah, if you're up for it, you haven't if you're in the area. And you're looking to get a takeaway pizza, don't just reach straight for the Domino's or the Papa John's. Give these fuck if you're in the air, give these guys a try. Yeah. I say I say in my review, I'm like, I can't wait 
to sit down with Joe and order one of these pizzas. Like, oh, I really on. want, I give really me, want. Gimme, 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 gimme. I really want to hear, hear Joe's thoughts on this pizza. Um, and obviously, I even mentioned in the review that obviously you make very nice pizzas as well. Um, <laughs> Thank well, you very much. I, I yeah. made one this evening. It was, it was delicious. Oh, excellent, excellent. I thought that I, uh, say- last last weekend, me and Lucy went to uh, Bournemouth to see uh, see some oh, of yes. our friends, and uh, they had one of the pizza ovens. So I, it was uh, watching them make it on that, and it's just like that. Two minutes mm. done, but it was yeah. like that everything, man. They had the whole legit set up. Nice. It was great. It's good fun. Yeah, it was good. I had a lot of pizza. I had pizza, bloody wagon horses with you, obviously the day before. Then the next day, I ordered that pizza from those guys. What's, there's nothing wrong with having pizza twice. Just had know? an opportunity, and I took it. It was very, there you go. very, very exactly. nice. Um, how was your trip down to Bournemouth? It was nice, man. Yeah, good, good weather. Um, we we didn't really sort of go anywhere uh, no. apart from there. We stayed at their home, but it's uh, yeah. yeah, lovely, lovely home, and they. Uh, Oh, they got they had some sort of crafty sort of ciders. Not not crafty like they were like, Wee! <laughs> like <laughs> I'll distract you, steal your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> crafty um, cider. Just, it was like a craft sort of cider, but it was like a cloudy <laughs> apple. It was really nice. I've got to find out what that was called. I can't remember. But yeah, no, it was uh yeah, it was a it was a lovely weekend. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah. Obviously, he, he took away a, a new crafty cider from, yeah. uh, from his and, experience. And uh, yeah, we we went. Uh, Lucy recently got a new car, so which was air conditioned. So that was oh, glorious. Wow. Yeah, and we yeah, were talking. Wow. Uh, what was it, on the way back? She'd she'd previously informed me of uh, the. Uh, this is probably news to everyone. Um, the, the the new Cardi B and Megan the Stallion uh, song about uh, what was it WAP. Wet ass pussy. I've been hearing it. I've not. I've been hearing about it. Yeah, she sent me some of the lyrics, man, and I was just like, "That is graphic." <laughs> it's it's shocking. Like I said, yeah. so just like, imagine if someone did like a rap song about their dick. Yeah, well, they yeah. do, don't they? <laughs> well, no, but like an entire song just dedicated yeah, yeah. to dick. That's that. What's that guy? The 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 the, the, the jokey rapper guy. Weird Al Yankovic. Dave. No, Dave. <laughs> he has the TV show Dave, which is actually really good. Oh, um, Lil, Lil Dicky. Yeah, yeah, who I didn't even know existed. I literally just came across his show one day and was like, oh, a comedy sitcom about a rapper. I'll give that a go. And it was, I didn't even know idea who, I, thought, I was a bit disappointed when I found no, it. No, I heard it was, he, he, he I was quite a bit, I was a bit disappointed when I found it was a bit of a viral YouTube star. But the series is actually really, it's, actually, it's on iPlayer now. Um, it's actually really good, really good watch. Um, nice. Really funny. Um Oh, that's good. I'm glad you had a, a, a nice little trip to trip away. Get out, get out the area. Yes, yes indeed. I went to uh, Chesant Water Adventures on um, Wednesday. I didn't ask. I know. <laughs> <I'm telling>. um, <laughs> it was interesting because, like, it opened. It opened, and I was like, I don't know if I want to go there. Blah blah blah. But was it I just the of... uh, like the, the whole thing was open? No, it's all open. It's all open. I mean, some bits obviously aren't, but majority of it is. And I was a bit like, do I really want to go? It's around the corner from me. But I was like, India, I need to do something with Indiana. Like, she yeah, needs yeah, yeah. to have something. I need to take her out for a day. She needs a good, fun day out. So me and my mum went to Ch- 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 World Adventures. And I was a bit dubious a little bit. My mum, we'd read some reviews about it since it reopening during, after, after lockdown and stuff. And it, they're all very negative reviews. And people just like, the staff are really rude. Um, no one was social distancing and they're, they're kind of some woman's review which I shouldn't have laughed about but it was like because um, the Gruffalo ride is now where the Bubble Works was yeah so the yeah, Bubble yeah. Works yeah. obviously is like there's like those almost like teacups but they're just round like capsules you sit in and they obviously on like a conveyor belt almost that kind of drops into the water and goes around the ride then you come you, get, you jump it doesn't stop you get on and off it as it goes it's not going very fast but one of the, the, the negative reviews was a woman saying <laughs> They wouldn't stop the Gruffalo ride to let her mum get on. What? Because they can't stop the ride. Go. They can't stop the ride because it's continuous. But so basically, she was like, they wouldn't stop the ride, and they wouldn't help her. They wouldn't Hang on, pull wait, her wait, hand. Wait, wait. But were they? Were they like? Was they? They'd set off on their fucking journey or whatever on this on this ride already. They weren't still in like the loading area. No, I think they were better. They were trying. They were going to get on the boat. Yeah, on, on the little <sighs> round thing. But but they hell. can't stop it, can they? Because it's all going around. So. They, she complained that they wouldn't stop the ride to let her mum get on, and they wouldn't, they could, they wouldn't help her. Now, what they should have said is they couldn't help her. It says everywhere they're not allowed to touch you. Yeah, of course they're yeah. not allowed to touch. Of course they're not allowed to touch you. So they're like, well, we're not allowed. 
and apparently, <laughs> apparently the mum fell in. <laughs> like, Are you kidding? I don't even know what there is to fall into. <laughs> like at that, that, that point, what of the, the fuck? Um, so there's a lot of negative reviews about it, and I was just like, oh, this is this could go over. And it, was, it was Wednesday, and it was really, 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 really hot. Yeah, like really fucking hot, like too hot. Um, I can tell you how hot it is because this is how, this is how hot it is. How Jeff. hot is it? It was so hot during the day at Chesapeake Adventures. I drank two, not liter bottles of water, but like in between two big bottles of water, like the one point fives. I drank a bottle of not even that big, maybe about eight fingers. It, it was like eight hundred and fifty um, mils. So it's, big, <laughs> so, so, so it's bigger than Let's a normal. Let's not get into it. Let's, that's fine. Right. Anyway, two big bottles of water. Two bottles of water. I drank. Two bottles of Coke and a bottle of Fanta, and I had an ice cream, and I didn't do one piss throughout the whole day because I was just sweating everything out. Cause it's so fucking hot. Yeah, I like, well, actually, funnily enough, when when we were in Bournemouth, I um uh, I drank a fair bit and I hadn't been to the toilet, and it was it was noticed. I was just was like, um, you haven't been to the toilet. It's been like five hours. I was just like, yeah, no, I don't need to go. Yeah, yeah. Did you go for an epic piss afterwards, or was it? I did like... eventually go big wee wee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been in there forty five minutes. He's his piss. <laughs> it won't stop. Jackson's only pissed once every four days. I um... went. I went during the night as well, and uh, I, the next morning, Lucy was ruined the like, sheets. No, Lucy was just like, "Oh, I was, I was woken up by the sound of a horse pissing last night." <laughs> <laughs> you were like, "Yeah, I know. I had to wait for him to finish before I could go." Um... <laughs> So we get to Chesterton and we arrive and you're going to get mega hot. So everyone's, everyone's not, we're expecting people to be a bit pissy. As soon as we arrive, a woman at the thing is just like, hello, you're staying in the hotel here. Yeah, really nice greeting. That, that explains us what she was about to do. She literally distracted us. She was like, hi, have you got booked day tickets? And then without, without, as she was saying it, pulled out her little temperature gun and was like, bing, bing, on both our foreheads. And I was no like, way. what the hell was that? Like, I knew that was going to happen, but like, you didn't, it's like you distracted me with a question first. And then was like, ha ha. She's been, like, she's been watching Men in Black, mate. You know, it's like when you think about in those situations where if someone pulled a gun on me, would I better quickly grab it? The answer's no. Because no, she, she, no, she was, she was, you know she was, she was, she was an old dear, and I was still just like, uh, no, we're here for what the hell? I would have been dead if that was a gun. <laughs> I um, I checked out the equalizer in my mum's recommendation, the um, the the Denzel Washington one, and there's yeah, a I bit know, in it, it where he's like, he's just, he just does this like, he slaps the guy's wrist and ends up with the gun, and it's like yeah, half yeah, a yeah. second, and it's like, I can't do that. I can't do that at all. Well, you can practice in these temperature ah, just guns. Just shoot me, mate. Um, so yeah, we got in, and you know what? The staff were, I didn't, the staff were really nice. Everyone was really nice. Everything was. We went straight to the Gruffalo ride. It was fine. No one fell in. You know, we didn't. We didn't have a lot of rides of India. She didn't have ride. some high demands for it. She went on like a little boat ride. She went on the flying elephants of my mum. We went on the big, huge carousel they have. We pretty much walked around the animals. It's a bit disappointing animal wise. It was so hot. They just you couldn't really see them. Yeah, like they're, yeah, yeah. They're all just tucked in shade somewhere. So it was a bit. I didn't hold that against them because you know it's a hot fucking day. But you didn't really see much of the animals. And we had to wait a bit to see the gorillas. And you get there and you just felt bad for them, man. They're all just lying on the floor in the heat, just like, uh. oh, God. I don't even care who these people are looking at me right now. I don't give a damn. I'm so hot. <laughs> but it was a fairly enjoyable day. Strange enough, though, I didn't get any geese drops from Chesnut One Adventures. I did see a mum trip over her kid. And she, <laughs> and she literally went, mm, that is the last time I'm tripping on you. Do you hear me? <laughs> oh, that is that. <laughs> That's Get out from that under that my was, feet! That was a, a regular occurrence. <laughs> yeah, it must have happened a few times that day. But overall, it was, it was actually a, quite a nice day. Like, although Indiana, strange enough, not after long we getting there, was like, I want to go back to Nanny and Meepa's house. I'm like, what are you talking about? We brought you here for the day, child. Yeah. She just wanted to go home. But we stayed a few hours. We went to the Sea Life Centre they have there. That was quite nice because it was all air in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when it's dark. she and yeah, and Ninja likes seeing all the fishes and she liked that bit. And, but when we walked out, that's when we first saw it was raining. I was like, oh my god, it's raining! And it was like came down a bit heavy, and I was just taking it in like I was fucking in Shawshank. Mate, I like, did the other uh, the other night. I was just like, oh, and I was like, oh, this is Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> and then like again, then the rain finished, got home, and it was still hot, and the summer's back out, and I was like, oh. It, yeah, it didn't. I I was um, over at Lucy's on Wednesday night, and we were out in her garden. There was sort of like the 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 shuffle, like you know, all the rumblings of lightning and stuff like that. But the rain never came. No, bastards. And it was just like, oh, rain never fucking came. It, it really te- uh, it's been teasing us. Even today, there's not been anything, has there? I had a bit of rain earlier, but. Yeah, it's been teasing. Nah, us. yesterday was pretty good for it. I went for a walk out in it. It was really nice. Yeah, I mean, yesterday I 
<laughs> Lizzie, Indiana was at Lizzie's parents. And I was like, oh, I literally, in the WhatsApp group, I'm in with like Lewis and Tim and Justin from that Jack. So I was like walking down the to, to, to pick up Indiana. And we'd been joking throughout the day, giving each other weather updates. And I sent them a video of me just being like, yo, I'm heading down. I've gone out in the field. I've risked it. I've gone out into the storm that might be coming to go. I would drive, but you know, it's only two minutes down the road. So I'm going to risk it. Press send on the video instantly. These huge drops of rain started coming down really hard. <laughs> and like before he gets a chance to apply, it's me seeing another video of me just running in the rain going, I bought, I bought, I bought. <laughs> and then there's a picture of me in the car. <laughs> and I had to go, I got Lizzie anyway, so it worked out. Nice. Um, should we go into a bit of geese dropping? Yes, let's do that. Let's do a bit of geese dropping. Geese dropping, of course, we're snippets. I overheard a conversation. Either we hear them, you hear them, you send them to us, and we say them on the podcast. That's how it works. Geese dropping. Geese dropping. Having a listen. All right. I've, I got sent a couple by Jacko. Shout yes. outs, Jacko Jackson. No relation Hello. to Joe Jackson. Um, yeah, yeah, you did say, oh, you said hello like he was a relation to you. <laughs> I'm actually Jacko Jackson. He sent me a couple. I'll start with Jacko's first. So, have you got keys, Jops? Yeah, I got a couple. Oh, shit. I can do it with you. Jack, Jacko's, yours, and then I'll do mine. All right. Okay, so the first one, Jacko sent. <laughs> no context, just the, the keys drop. You look so creepy with your Mickey Mouse cup full of rum. Makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> all right next one i was sitting in backers and i heard this in the booth next to me girl one you know the crab from little mermaid boy the syphilis one girl two <laughs> wasn't it wasn't it mufasa girl one jesus you know i can't christ. read that well don't even know what it means <laughs> jesus christ don't even know what it means you mean mufasa you know I you know I can't read that well. <laughs> That's how do I, I ever replied to him that been I don't know what that means. He's like, nope, me neither. <laughs> oh I'm so I'm perplexed by the amount of stupidity in that last one. What have you got? Uh I got a couple. Um I was I was in Kingston uh last week and I heard uh there's two guys coming out of uh the boots and uh one said, My holiday is ruined. I don't have any prescription sunglasses to take with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I don't think that's going to really ruin. ruin. Yeah, Unless probably, he has really bad eyesight. Probably the quarantine conditions that you're going to have to go into is uh, is probably what's going to cause, cause grief fair. to you. That's fair. <laughs> uh, and I heard this the other night um, uh, uh, from the neighbours uh, over to the right of us. Um, they were all out in their garden really late. And I think their kids were out there as well. And they're sort of teenagerish. And uh, one of the, they were all like having a big old conversation. It was, I tell you what, ballsy move by one of the kids. They asked their parents what drugs they'd done. Oh, that was amazing. Answer? I was just like, wow. And then I heard the girl say, Mom, I know you smoke weed and done ecstasy. <laughs> I mean, I I've asked like, that. I've yo. asked that question before. Fair, fair enough. My I've dad smoked have. it once and he went, he ran out the house and they had to go looking for him. <laughs> this was like during the 70s or something. Oh, yeah. It was heavier back then. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so they're having this big old conversation and then the girl suddenly just goes, would you rather I die from ketamine or corona? <laughs> I mean, you can't die from beer, so you'd be all right. Ketamine. Oh, I know, nice. I was making the corona beer joke, the obvious joke, obviously, went over old, obviously, Joe Jackson's head here. <laughs> Shitter. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, <sighs> so that's, uh, I, I thought that was uh, quite nice. an interesting sentence. I have a couple of geese drops from the same person a couple of doors down for me as well on over the fence job. This is the future of geese dropping now. It's over this the fence it, listening. Um, it, again, the first one I heard, fence I, I definitely, I definitely like geese dropped this guy a few times. I'm fairly sure it's the guy we call Dickhead Dad who's always shouting at his kid. Um, literally heard him say, oh, uh, if you eat that, you'll you'll blow your arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't hear. I didn't if you hear eat that, supply. you'll blow your arsehole. If you eat that, you'll blow your arsehole. I don't, I don't, next that one. sentence is almost doesn't doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It's, it's like he's missing a couple of words there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he said. Um, next one. 
Obviously, it was very hot here. It was about dinner time. I think you might have been dinner in the garden. This obviously shows what a bit of a knob this guy is. It was a bit hot, and you, really hot, actually. And you hear him say, I hate this heat. I feel like I'm in fucking Durka Durkistan. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's that just goes to say what, <laughs> what kind of neighbours that Greg has in his area. <laughs> it's a real fucking... mixed bag, actually, my, my, my street down here. A lot of nice people, but there are... I mean, if, you've if it's the guy I think it is, I heard, this is also the guy that openly slags off everyone that lives in the area on the bus. Uh, well, Lizzie, well, Lizzie's like, dickhead dog was on the bus, though. They're being like, fucking full of scum all live around there, really loud on the bus, with everyone who just got on the bus with him who lives there. Fucking <laughs> hell. It's like, you're so, right, yeah. Dan. Scum. Um, I'm away next week, I believe. Yeah, for 20, well, at the time of recording this, it'll be next Sunday, the 23rd. I go away for a week. Nice, very nice. With, with the parents and the, and the family. Don't remember re- receiving your holiday request, Gag, but uh, that's, that's uh, fine. Well, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Ed signed it off. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it'll be 23rd uh, Sunday next week, and then I'm back like, I think the, the Friday or something, the following Friday. I'm nice. going for like a week, basically, maybe just under. Lovely. Um, uh, we're staying in one with us caravan down somewhere, Dorset Way, the other side of pool. I don't know what's going to be happening, what's going to be open. It might even get cancelled between now and then. Who knows what's going to happen in this crazy world? But, ow, that's my elbow. But we're staying in um, my and dad's caravan. Not a nice, fancy Airbnb. Unlike the one that I did see on a, a Den of Geek website, which is a website I see. This is a wonderful segue into the article that you're about to it read, is. by the way. I used to get a lot of um, good, uh, uh, good geek news from Den of Geek. Recently, they've kind of revamped themselves and they've gone a bit, I don't know, they kind of remind me of Heat Magazine now. I don't like it Virally. But this was, a, yeah, virally. But this was actually a really good um, picture. This was the last remaining blockbuster has been turned into a Airbnb. Oh, yeah, I did see this. And it looks cool, man. It it's, looks an or- it's, it's in Oregon. It's a uh, blockbuster video store is opening stores to residents for free nights only in September for just $4 a night. That's, a, that's last... a genius move. It looks awesome i don't know if you've seen the picture i'm gonna hold it yeah up. yeah yeah it's like it. uh, it they got the big logo so yeah it's like a slightly raised platform at the top and it's just got like the sofa which i pulled I out love, into a bed mate, that that living room looks like roseanne's living room it does it's got the tv <laughs> it's got this, the bedside lamps it's got a tv set up there it's got like a dreamcast there with snares all the consoles are there and you've literally to your left just got the entire blockbuster store i'd probably freak out a little bit staying there in case someone broke in but you've got the entire blockbuster stores to the side of you with all the videos and stuff that's amazing. And you and you can literally just go from what I gather, have a look through and see what to watch. Well, you're there for three days to try and work your oh way through God. what you can. I'd absolutely, mate. You'd have you'd have sex in a blockbuster video, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. I, I mean, I hope. I guess they dark on the windows. I don't really know. <laughs> but they say nope. we've cre- they say we've created the perfect space, complete with a pull out couch, bean bags, and pillows for you to cozy up with new releases from the nineties. Crack open a two-litre Pepsi before locking into a video game, charting your future in a game of Mash, or watching a movie after movie. <laughs> oh, I don't want to. I know we've. I know we've spoken uh, about blockbusters in the past, but do you ever remember like the buckets of popcorn that you then had to yeah. microwave that they did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all weird. <laughs> they, they did. I never really got food with in blockbuster. I remember oh, like. Was, oh no, mate! Juicers. Do you remember like Starburst oh, juicers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember used those. to get them in there. Oh, me and my mates were bang on the juicers. Bang on the juicers. <laughs> oh, I used to love it, mate. Love it. <laughs> Sounds like you had a bit of a problem. A, couldn't keep me away from a juicer. <laughs> Sounds like you had a bit of a problem. Um, we, had, uh, we used to separate them into colours, uh, <laughs> just because we were fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted 100,000 brown M&Ms, or also you wouldn't go on stage. That's, mate, that's exactly why we did it. It was all because of Wayne's World 2. I'm just like, let's let's get like five bags of juicers and just separate them into colour. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... All right, let's do it. <laughs> oh, um, what, what, do you, wait, you separated all the colours? Yeah, there's only right. five colours, Greg. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. But was there a lot of them in each one? I can't remember. No, uh, probably not. It was bag. a fairly average collection. Oh, and then you just eat them afterwards? Yeah. All oh, right. Oh, right. Any, you just any, basically any delayed questions? it. <laughs> you, well, yeah, no, did you pile them or did you line them up? No, nah, bowls, mate, bowls. Bowls, Jesus Christ. You guys always bowls lying around. Five bowls. Someone's house. Someone's ass. You bring a bowl else. with you. Tell Look, you got me as a blockbuster. You got everyone, bring, ev- bowls everyone, bring a bowl with you because we need to get them. We need to get this prepped straight away. You can't be no. fucking around. Every Steve, house, you haven't bought a bowl. You haven't bought every a bowl. House. Fuck off, right, guys? We're man down because Steve <laughs> didn't bring a bowl. 
there trying was to pass off to a fucking plate as other. a bowl. It was fine. We had five. We all bought a bag. There was five of us, five each. All go for a bag. Bosh, different colour. It was fine. <laughs> Used to have tournaments on um, FIFA '98. That was oh, good. I thought you meant on separating the sweets. Oh no, no, on, no! From through to the final. Tournament war. Who can do it the fastest? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, how it would work. Wouldn't put it past us, in all honesty. We were. I don't know how it would work. We weren't. We weren't. We weren't high up in the popularity contest in uh, in school. I wonder if they still got the erotica section in that blockbuster Airbnb. Oh, they used to have some belters in there. I wonder if they have belters. Eh? Is that what was that like? <laughs> Not the S and M. The old, the old, the S and M. Absolute, that's, what it's, that's, it. that's what it was called, Absolute Belters. God, cool, got us a couple of belters tonight to watch. There's, uh, they always had like, uh, it, was, it would be like Gladiator, an erotic story. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's that Simpsons episode, isn't it, when um, Selma takes Bart and Lisa to the Duff Gardens and Homer's too sick to oh, go yeah. and he stays at home and then he starts feeling a little bit better. And uh, Marge is like, oh, I rented a movie in case you were feeling better. And it's like a Hercules erotic <laughs> thing, isn't it? <laughs> and they, ca- they come home early and he's got the bed sheet on like Hercules and he's carrying Marge up to the bedroom when the kids come home. <laughs> so good. Brilliant. So good. Um, it's not really erotic. In fact, the furthest from that. But did you see this whole, <laughs> this whole, um, this whole hoo-ha <coughs> with the... Um, Greg, there's Troll. been so much hoopla recently. We have to the, narrow it down. It's true, there has been a lot. So there's the the doll from the film Trolls Two World Tour, and there's a there's a, the main doll in it. The main troll is called Poppy, and they released there's a doll recently that was released by um, Kenner, and they released this doll, and apparently it's been recalled due to paedophile grooming accusations. What? The troll? Trolls World Tour doll recalled amidst paedophile grooming accusations. Uh, There's been a lot to, of complaints. Yeah, so, this, actually, what, it wasn't so Ken what, or sorry, troll, it was Hasbro. The troll is being accused? Right. I'll explain. So this is Hasbro, sorry, I've made it. The company behind the, the Trolls World Tour merchandise is taking heat for this specific doll and has decided to pull the DreamWorks Troll World Tour giggle and sing poppy from stores oh there's a picture of uh of the doll joe for you to see it's very nice Ugh. lovely not like they used to look are they trolls ah uh, there's this, the same elements i don't know i yeah. guess um the seemingly innocent and fun doll for the most part the doll is pink rainbow coloured hair and skirt and when you push the button on her stomach she will sing or utter phrases like how about a hug? It's all innocent, aimed at marketing, aimed at making young girls smile. However, Poppy has another hidden button, which is supposed a to hidden be, button. Yes, which is supposed to um, uh, elicit happiness. This button is not really a button, but a sensor. The problem is the sensor <laughs> is where it's located and the noisy Poppy makes when the sensor is activated. The sensor in question is located between Poppy's legs. And when you set it off, she makes wee sounds or makes oh, oh, oh sounds. Fucking Jesus Christ. Yes, it's definitely a strange place to have the button slash sensor. <laughs> the butt butts. <laughs> Jessica McMains was the petition's author, and this is how she described its purpose. Our society is conditioning our children to think paedophilia is okay. Ah, that's a bit of a jump. There, I can right? I can assure you that that is not the case. <laughs> this Trolls World Tour doll named Poppy has a button on her private area under her skirt. You have to push this button on the doll's private areas and she gasps and giggles. This is not okay for a child's toy. This toy needs to be removed from our stores. What will this toy make up? What will this toy make our innocent, impressionable children think? That it's fun when someone touches your private area? That paedophile and child molestations are okay? It's not okay. It's not fun. It's damaging and has long term effects on a child's mental, physical health. Sign this petition and get this toy removed from the shelves and help save the children. Children are our future. We are their voice. I feel like. Um, bit of a jump. Bit of a jump. Also, I feel like kids learn more from their parents than they do their toys. <laughs> I mean, I do. Well, you say that. I mean, I think Indiana has managed to learn a lot more from YouTube than me. <laughs> well, I mean, th- YouTube loves paedophiles. Yeah. So, 
but it's a bit of a jump to be like paedophile. Like I get what she's saying. It looks you know, it's, it's teaching kids to like rub private parts and make. Ooh, it's like, ah, but like, it's not like you run your hand over the sensor and it just goes. You want some candy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah, exactly. It's not like it's been it's made like in, as a. It doesn't say like get in the van. Whenever yeah, it's not. A man yeah, exactly. Asks, get yeah, in the I, van. Get I don't in the think. Van. I don't think you're going to get them in like paedophile starter kits. Like nah. So your son would be a paedophile. Here's your starter kit. Here's your poppy well told door. Here's your glasses. Here's your here's your fake moustache. And here's your French coat. <laughs> here's your sun. Here's your glasses with a nose attached. <laughs> here's your glasses with a nose attached. A unclippable removable moustache if you want. And your uh, light plimp soles for light running and jogging if you have to make a quick getaway. Get oh, out yes. there and have fun. Got to got to make as little noise as possible. But so uh, I, I think. <sighs> but it, the, the but the petition worked and they retracted. The doll. So I mean, it's a fair point. It's a bit of a weird thing. Very, the, oh, they've got a video hand. here. Does this work? Okay, I wanted to do a quick video because I find. Of course, you did, Karen. And I oh. <laughs> Just press the button. <laughs> press the button. No, I've got to make it 10 minutes so this can get monetized. The video was the best way. So oh. I just touched her tummy and she's going to sing for me. All right, she's singing, touch her tummy. Now, touch her. Oh god! The button is literally right between her legs. <laughs> oh my god, it's bum hole. What? <laughs> That's the noises it makes. Oh my god, it's a bit Yeah, well maybe that's maybe that's sort of like will deter people from touching that area. They're like I mean I, I mean I, I mean I would say does she make those noises in the film? Maybe I have seen that film. I've watched it of Indiana. It was it was a film that called all the calls major hoo ha <laughs> when it got well, released because of its orgy scene. When it got released straight onto a video on demand rather than cinema at the start of lockdown and it made loads of money and a lot yeah. of the cinemas were like, Fuck you for doing this to us. Um not really their fault though. Saying about that, like, just like when you was, I mean, how like people react to that, and there's the whole like, is your kid really gonna react to know what the problem is? Are they gonna see it as a problem? Are they even gonna care? Are they even gonna notice the sensor? Like, obviously, it's the parents, isn't it? You can't obviously the par- it. No, obviously, the parents have stepped in and been like, this has to be stopped. But it is interesting. So, like, Indiana's at that age now where she's starting to, I mean, she's what, three in October, where she's starting to talk a lot about gender yeah like she asks me a lot she picks up a lot of cuddly toys and asks me if it's a he or a she so she's really starting to ask me those questions but the other day i sat at my parents house and she was playing in the garden with nando who's my parents dog and she ran in ran in and was like daddy daddy i was like what she went nando's got a willy like you and i was just like Oh yeah, he's a boy. She went, it's really. It's, she's like bending over. It's by his bum. It's by Breaking his news. bum. He's got a willy like you. And then, and then when I when I picked her up from his mum the other day, I'm like, did she tell you about the willy? She's like, yeah, oh yeah. She told me that you and Nando have a willy. <laughs> <laughs> what sharing it? <laughs> she's really yeah. We share it. Uh, she's very yeah. She's very excited to discover that you know I'm not the only person in the world with a willy. Nando no. has one too. So that's changed. That's really blown her mind. That dogs have them as well. Yeah. So it's, I think yeah. maybe it could. Maybe maybe she would react to that a bit. I don't know if she did see it. Like she maybe she would react to that doll in that way because she's in that frame of mind now where she is becoming very aware. But I don't know. Indiana's also in that age where she likes getting naked a lot. And I've said to you before, she's turned to me and be like, "Come on, Daddy, let's play naked again." And I'm like, "You can't say that to me in front of people. <laughs> you literally cannot say to me in front of people, "Come on, Daddy, see, let's go home and play naked." Now, see, if that doll said that, then I'd be like, well, "It's got some problem. pedophile tensions in this one." Yeah, that would be a problem. Yeah, let's play a game, sit in my lap. <laughs> let's play. Let's play the naked game. Let's play the naked game, naked or not. I'm naked. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a. It's a. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's. I can understand that, like, obviously, but I mean, you take a bit more thought in the process. I mean, like, you'd have a board meeting and be like, "Why is the sensor its arsehole? Well, surely it would have had some sort of test audience, right? Yeah. Pedophiles. Like, <laughs> Pedophiles. <laughs> great. Them. I love it. <laughs> can I take this home? <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. I really yeah. I don't know what it sounds like that. I really like this. This is a good little Johnny on the street's gonna love it. The focus group was pedophiles. Uh, this isn't a kid's toy. This is a toy for pedophiles. Uh, 
So what uh, what age range are we looking at? Oh, you know, we're thinking they'll be like you know, the forty two ages to 60. three upwards. Okay, so what uh, what are we what are we doing for the uh, the test for the focus group? Oh, you know, we've got like you know, sex um, offenders. We got registered like, sex like, offenders, like thirty onwards. What? Uh, well, they're all paedophiles. Oh, great! They know what they're talking about then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. There's also a couple of My Little Pony fans in there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you tell they're all dressed up, all furry? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, the paedophiles are fucking them. <laughs> we've made a gro we've made a major <laughs> ma- You know what? Seal the room and burn it. <laughs> it always reminds me it. it always reminds me of that, that bit in Brass Eye with the the, pedoph- the fame the infamous paedophile episode. Oh god. Where yeah. they're where they're like we just we, we they wanted to get rid of this paedophile, so we put him in a rocket. And NASA launched him into space. <laughs> but, but unfortunately, so there was some confusion, and a 10 year old boy ended up in the rocket with him. <laughs> a quote from NASA says, This is the last thing we wanted to happen. <laughs> I always, um, I always, like, <laughs> so I always good. liked it when um, the paedophile storms the studio and they put him in the stocks. Oh, it's Simon Pegg, isn't it? It's Simon Pegg, and then it's just yeah. like, and he, uh, he brings his son out and he's like, This is my son. Do you want to have sex with him? And he's like, no, I'm not attracted <laughs> to him. And he's like, what? Well, 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 good, good. But you are saying you would have sex with him, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. Uh, and that's the script because that's also the the one where they're like, this paedophile has been dressing him up as a school, <laughs> and it cuts to the CCTV. <laughs> and there's that big building going just going street. down the road, and she's like, oh, he really, good. we must find him. He really is a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had that on DVD once. I don't know if I still do. Oh, it's legendary, man. I think it's actually on um, 4OD. I think I saw it on there recently. I've done it the paedophile one. That caused a lot of hoo-ha, didn't it? Hoo-ha yeah, seems to be the time, day. Seems to be, time, seems to be the was, quote, doesn't it? That, seems that's to be my gonna saying. Be, uh, is that, I think that's the episode title. Yeah, hoo-ha. A lot of hoo-ha. Hoopla and, hoopla and hoo-ha. Yeah, we can do a lot of hoo-la, hoopla, and you can just draw, <laughs> draw um, sexual trolls. <laughs> nah, I'm all right. <laughs> I'll just draw a bunch of paedophiles. <laughs> How would you know they're paedophiles? Hi, I'm a paedophile. My name is... Yeah. I'll just, uh, I'll just type in paedophile. No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't do that. I did have one last bit to go over here, which is quite interesting. It was... I used... Someone used the phrase recently. I heard so. Do you know what? It was actually a geese drop that I didn't write down. That I, heard, literally, I heard someone say it. When they were like, oh, straight from the horse's mouth. I heard something. That's a, a usual saying. We, if we would use that, we've heard that saying for years. Yeah. But I was like, what does that mean? The origin I don't even it. understand what that means. What does that mean? And other s- sayings like, you know, just to the nines. Like, all these things that we use. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to type it into Google and see what it means. Rather well, than well just they're very old, old, oldish, aren't they? Like They've usually got like a origins go back a, a few yeah. fucking decades or a hundred years or so. And this was actually, like this month, a new article like popped up. So I was like, oh, great. This is like, you know, destined to be. I don't care about all the intro here. So I've got a few sayings here and I've got basically, they're very short, which is great. What, why they are what they are and where they come from. And this stuff fascinates me because you do hear a lot of urban myths about, like, I remember someone telling me that freezing my balls off, or was it brass monkeys, was something to do with, like, the brass balls or some kind of ship. And when it got really cold on, like, some part of the mast or something, they used to fall off because they, they changed size in the cold and fell off. And that huh. was, like, freezing your balls off or freezing brass monkeys. Right, mate, right, like, right, right. I don't know how true that is, but you'd hear all these various reasons why. So... I had a few here to go through. You ready? No. Yes. Close. Close, but no cigar. I definitely... <coughs> oh, yeah, ever, yeah, yeah. Have you ever used that? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely, not, I haven't I meant definitely it. I've usually been that. like, ha, huh, close, but no cigar. Yeah, that, yeah sarcastically. Close, but no cigar. Close, but no cigar. Close, but no cigar. Close, but no cigar. Close, but no Because I've had, I finished off, polished off my last bit of rum. Ah, oh, lovely. I, I actually had to run down the shop before to get a can of Coke just to... Because I'd run out of coke just to get like the last drop <laughs> into a glass, yeah. over to go to get my last rum done. Oh yeah, that was a big boy, big boy gulp. Oh yeah, that was a big boy gulp. So yeah, close, close, Sorry, but everyone. no cigar. Uh, chasing Great. it with a beer, eh? Mm-hmm. It's Friday, boy. 
Right, close but no cigar. During carnivals in the 1800s, cigars were awarded as prizes for winning carnival games. The updated saying would be, close but no stuffed teddy bear. <laughs> It's not as good, is so, it? Yeah, but it kind of puts into perspective, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like the close, cigars were just a prize. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Whoa, man, how, 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 how times have changed. The 1920s. I just, you know... 1800s. Oh, sorry, 1800s. Yeah. Shit just didn't exist back then. No, oh, man, it was all fine. You know, you know fucking everyone's had cocaine in it. Yeah, everyone smoked and didn't know it was a problem. You didn't need a license to drive. Like, Pretty sure but, you can murder people. Burning the midnight oil. Okay. I mean, this is, I feel like that's to do with like lanterns. Excellent. Yes. Working, Excellent. working extra hard or late into the night in a time before electricity, candlelight or lamp oil, lamp oil was used for lighting. You would stay up late to work. You literally burned the lamp oil at midnight. Ah, so it is it. burning the midnight oil. Like you would literally yeah. get out at midnight. Jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> this is used I feel like that's a how lot. bands used to get around <laughs> <laughs> again 1800s in the mid 1800s circuses would parade around town before setting up with bandwagons leading the parade they drew large crowds and politicians started renting space on the bandwagons to get face time with an audience over time oh, politicians would make calls of action not to jump on the opponent's opponent's bandwagon and the phrase took on a negative a negative meaning to mindlessly go along with whatever became flashy or popular yeah interesting so politicians were like obviously oh actually this bandwagon that's leading this parade of circus through the town people will see it well if i stood on it and started you know vote for me and stuff i like you know, it yeah, it's clever. It's quite good at that. It's clever. Yeah, I like that one. That one's uh, interesting. I also yeah. that the the, um, the style of doing like the parade is a real sort of Pied Piperish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like... <laughs> Vote for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this one I don't even really think's a saying. Roll up the window. Is that a saying? That's more of a I request, I think. Isn't it? That's what I thought. Roll up the window. I guess it's because you wouldn't really roll it, uh, would you? Oh, right. Yeah, that's obvious then. So that's before when you literally had to roll the lever in the car door, which, you know, that still exists. The old cars to have that there around. Oh, roll up the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 that's taken me back to my childhood. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Roll, roll up, up the, window. the window. I never really thought that. No, no, no. Or like wind, wind up the window. I think we used to say roll up, roll down. Roll up the window. Wind, wind the window up. I mean, we've crapped that one straight away. That literally is what it is. This this, <laughs> was this article written by like a child who's just like, oh man, in the olden days, they used to roll up windows. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In cars. I don't know why they sound like that. Look at the look at the things we have now. Like it's just things that are just like peng. It's just and buttons. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The wording. Um, get off your high horse. I'd like to think that was getting a horse stoned before a race or something. Yeah. <laughs> You can't race like that. Before the automobile, owning a horse was a sign of prominence. Wealth. Wealth. Yeah, like prominence. Wealth. And, yeah. S- and since nobility and high ranking military officials are primarily the ones who got to own them, to get off your high horse literally meant to dismount your horse and humble yourself. Today, it's implied that the person is, an a- is acting superior, often in a moral context. Yeah, I get that. That's good. Yeah. I think that's my favourite. I mean, as a mad hatter, crazy as a mad, as mad as a hatter, we know that's Alice in Wonderland, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, da, 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 oh, wait a minute. In the, in the 17th and 18th centuries, mad hat make. Oh, of course, no, it's the hat, yeah. hat makers often had uh, issues or went mad as, as a result of the mercury poisoning, a side effect of, manufacture, of manufacturing felt hats. Mercury poisoning. Holy yeah, shit. that's mad. So when they oh. made the hats, and that's where the phrase comes from: "was mad as a hatter" because they were called hatters. You made the hats. I, as soon as I saw that, I suddenly started remembering hearing that before. I like that's that. really that's good. good, man. Take it of a grain of salt is like the longest reason here. I mean, it's not that long, but it's been the longest one I've seen written down here. Take it of a grain of salt. So I, we, would, that's usually just like don't believe it, right? It might not be true. Yeah, I would have thought. You know, if I was like, you know, Joe, take this with a grain of salt, but I heard that uh, Ed is moving to Canada. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, right, fuck, is that true? Oh, I'll ask him about that. He said, take it with a grain of salt. Okay, I'll take this grain of salt and I'll go ask him. 
this is one of the most I feel like ancient... that's like isn't it to do with like about salt can change like it's like you know like salt can change a, a, a meal or a dinner or something it just adds a bit of something isn't something that's paranormal as well like then people throw salt over their shoulder or something to like get rid of spirits that's uh no 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 that's just like a bad luck or good luck thing um this is one of the most ancient ones originating in 77 a.d Although it wasn't used in its modern sense until around the 17th century, a grain of salt was thought to aid in the digestion of food and also as a component and an antidote for poison. So for hundreds of years, the phrase was literal. The figurative meaning, don't take everything at face value, but use your own... um, um, Use your own... I can't read. (laughs) Don't, Don't take everything at face value... You know, it's up to you to sort of the truth. That is a more modern take on the same phrase. Huh. That's so strange, isn't it? At the, yeah. The passage where this originated comes from Pliny's Naturalist Historia. Quote here, after the defeat of the mighty monarch, uh, here we go, Jesus Christ, Mithridates Gangus Pompeius <laughs> found in his private cabinet a recipe for an antidote in his own handwriting. It was to the following effect. Take two dried walnuts, two figs, and 20 leaves of rule. Pound them all together with the addition of a grain of salt. If a person takes this mixture fasting, he will be proof against all poisons for that day. Wow. So if they're fasting, so if, they have, if they're not eating, they have yeah. to do that. Wow. So Dressed to like the a, nines. Like an old, like an old medicine. Yeah. God, there's actually quite a lot here. I must start skipping through these. There's actually quite a lot here. I thought, the, <laughs> I thought this was actually a really short list, but now I'm here. I'm like, actually, it's quite a lot here. It's like I'll the do, Ian Beale history all over again. I'll go for the ones that I find interesting. Dressed to the nines, though. This one I actually knew. Dressed, but I think it's really interesting. Dressed to the nines means that you were rich enough to literally purchase the entire nine yards it took to make a tailor-fitted outfit. Huh. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? I like that one as well. It's got a bit of knowledge to it. Mm. Mm. Dressed to the nines. I like that. Um, At the drop of a a hat, instead of a gunshot to indicate that a race has started, in the 1800s it was customary to drop a hat to begin. Well, you know, you don't have to like just load a bunch of gunpowder to shoot you in the air. No, this this is a really common one. Pulling out all the stops. Gosh, you pulled out all the stops, mate. Meaning, apply your best effort, originated from when organists would literally pull out all the stops from every pipe on an organ in order to play at maximum volume. Right. Now, see, this, a lot of these, I, 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 I don't know. But they are, I mean, they've got yeah, a lot of well, Yeah, it's interesting. Cool. Uh, straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, yeah. Here we go. This is the one. Purchasing a horse was an expensive endeavour, and unless you knew where to look, you could easily be swindled. A horse's teeth, however, could tell you all you need to know, the age, health, and general condition of the horse. So literally, the horse's mouth told you the truth. Interesting. Look at that. Yeah. I, thought it was like, I thought it was like a talking horse. I really, really, I really thought it was a talking horse. Nick, in the nick of time, now I've always wondered about this one, because... In the nick of time, do you ever, do you don't really use the word nick as a measurement for anything else, right? No, uh, I would say nick, nick as in stolen or like a, a slight scratch. Yeah, slight scratch. You wouldn't, you know, not. So in the nick of time, through the 18th century, businessmen often kept tracks of debts owed by carving notches or nicks onto a tally stick. And when someone right. arrived to pay off their debt before the next nick was carved, they, they'd saved that day's worth of interest, thus arriving in the nick of time. Right, last one. Interesting one. I like this one. Bite the bullet. Bite the bullet. Yeah, it's like, uh, what do you call it? It's like um, like a taking a leap of faith almost. You know, just sort of like, ah, oh, fuck it. Just, just bite the bullet, go for just it. Just bite the bullet. It's just, you know, just sort of like, just get it done. When no painkiller was available in makeshift battlefield tents, for example, soldiers literally had to bite down on a bullet during surgical operations. To bite the bullet now just means to endure something necessary but unpleasant. (laughs) Are they saying that 
it was unnecessary but pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> man. <coughs> Oh man, that's awesome! Good, good selections there. Yeah, right, really let's... good. Yeah, that, they're really interesting, man. Yeah, really interesting. I'd like to see uh, almost like a, a drunken history sort of style show where people are like dressing up to the and like reenacting the occasion where that was coined. Man, we could do that. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that ourselves. I would really like to do that. <laughs> we could do that. We we we'll just do. We'll give we, that a go. We, we just rip off drunken histories. Yeah, well, I mean, we 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 don't have like a budget for like costumes, so we'll just do it present day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just be yeah, just pretend it's eighteen hundreds, or we like just film ourselves playing Battlefield. Like, <laughs> or yeah, either playing Battlefield, or I'll do like uh, I'll do like a a comic series of like you and me, <laughs> in like, and it'll be like the date of when it was started, and it'll just be like us. Basically, just it'll be like a little history lesson, but probably with a bit of swearing. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, they're really interesting. I like those on Bite the Bullets. Yeah, they're good. Uh, bite the yeah. Bullets, eh? Yeah, maybe I'll keep that because I'll forget all those and be like, oh, do you know where that comes from? Because there's, there's, like, <laughs> there's a famous one, right, about the cock and ball story, right? Wasn't there like, it, was it, wasn't it like there was actually a pub called the cock and a pub called the ball? And there was like something going on, but something happened between them, and they called it. Like, I think they actually made a bit of a, a film about it with Steve Coogan and Gillian Anderson. It was called The Cock and Ball Story. That's a weird. I'd like to see them both as in the X Files. <laughs> <laughs> you just say in like the X Files. See... Yeah, I want to oh, see yeah, Steve yeah, Coogan and Gillian, Gillian Anderson in the X Files. Yeah, yeah, it's redoing it. It's redoing it. That'd be oh, amazing. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, Gillian, I don't want to alarm you, but I think there's some sort of paranormal activity going on on the A three five nine. It's not. I've just noticed. I've been waiting on um, Facebook for. Um, one of Lizzie's friends, but you know, one, of the, one of the people I'd count saying that you know, they're really, really, really nice uh, couple, um, Lisa and Simon. Simon's an awesome guy. I've probably spoke about Simon before. It was his 40th, and a little while ago, we were asked to do like a small clip for a music video she was making for his birthday to an Oasis song. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Like, we, we'd filmed all our clips. And I, only today, I was like, when's it Simon's birthday? I really want to see this video. And I've just seen now, literally like, five minutes ago on Facebook, she's been like, happy 40th birthday to Simon. And I'm like, where's this fucking video? But I'm like, <laughs> do we, might, she might not even put it on Facebook. She can't, maybe because of copyright. We might not even see it. <laughs> I'm just like, I really want to see it. I really want to see what it looked like. Or maybe oh, she no, didn't manage to get it done. Able to, man. It's maybe like, I uh, shouldn't have said anything. Maybe I won't see it. <laughs> maybe it didn't get it like, finished. There shouldn't, I don't think there's like copyright issues with just like, I mean, I guess because there's music in there. I, but how much shit has people posted before and had music in? I had the other day uh, a warning thing off my Instagram, and it was like, "Yo, we have pulled one of your videos because of copyright." And I was like, "What video?" And it was literally from like two and a half years ago when Indiana was a baby, and I was filming her in the bedroom when we were living with his parents, and there was music playing in the background, and it oh, pulled the video. But it took like so two and a half ridiculous. years to do it. Yeah. yeah, like only the other day it was just like, yo, we pulled your video, fuck yourself. Um, yeah, and I was like, no, fuck yourself. So I'm not even sure I should have mentioned that video because I'm not sure whether, whether Lisa actually did it or not, um, or got it finished, or it hasn't happened yet. So well, no, don't worry, Greg. I, I'm scrolling through the this... comments, no one said anything. <laughs> Greg, uh, don't worry, because you've got a week until this comes out and you can easily edit this part. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of faff, though. Uh, a lot of faff. A few pictures from the Fighting Cocks today. Let's have a look through. Yeah, everyone looks to be having a good time. Reopened. Jacko's back there again. Fighting cocks reopened. Queue up outside. Table's outside. Look, it looks pretty nice. If you uh, if you're itching to get back down there, go give it a go. Like Jamie, to be they fair, are open. Jamie, to be fair, I guess wouldn't. He's held back opening it compared to everyone else who opened early. So yeah, but I think that was more. And in he has said to... this is a bit of a trial run, so we'll see how he gets, yeah. and how it goes. But uh, good luck. Good luck to every small businesses because a lot of them were held, were told they couldn't open recently, and now I've seen um, they're now actually going to relax even more restrictions, and now they're going to let like close contact beauty places open massages yeah. and, all the, and other places open but they saw they have increased the fine if you're caught without a mask in certain places yeah it's like free grand I, uh, or something isn't it i mean good good luck to everyone man good luck to them good luck to us trying to find new fucking jobs <laughs> <laughs> just good luck good luck to everyone that's been affected by the last eight months <laughs> i know it's crazy sometimes i kind of forget like i'm like yeah. oh, i kind of i'm like oh wait a minute 
everything's <laughs> everything's fucked <laughs> Yeah, I know. I because uh, there's yeah. points where I'm like, oh, what a really nice day I've had, chilling in the garden, and like, you know, it's nice, like, you know. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't how it's meant to be. It, it feels great. It's, it's, it's... Yeah, man, I, I I miss the I miss the routine. I've um, made fucking my routine a bit because I would usually just go to bed when Izzy went to bed. But recently, there's like shows I want to watch. I've been watching that Gangs of London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That show is fucking brutal. Holy fuck. Um, I've been watching that, but Liz, Liz doesn't like it, so I literally wait for her to go to bed to watch. It's basically how it was with Last of Us 2, waiting for her to go to bed for me to play it. Now I'm waiting yeah, for her yeah. to go to bed to watch Gangs of London. But because I'm not watching it until like half 11 midnight, I keep falling asleep before the end. And I keep waking up and like rewinding it to where I remembered being, <laughs> trying to watch it again and falling asleep. And I just keep waking up on the sofa at like four or five. But when it was really hot, I just sat downstairs. I was like, fuck it. I actually pulled the bed out, yeah, opened no, the windows, enough, and was just like, yeah. fuck, this is too hot. But last night again, I woke up on the sofa at like half four, quarter to five, and was like, "Fuck's sake!" The only thing, uh, the only thing I can say, man, is try and get out of that routine because I'm trying right now, and it's really fucking hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, 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 it is hard. Like, it's really fucking hard. I mean, well, I'm getting up now. Like, I was getting up at like a fucking ugh, like a student. I was getting up at like eleven o'clock. Now I'm getting up at like ten, and then now I'm going to try and get that back to nine o'clock. See, I, fucking... fortunately, I, I, I'm doing the other part where I'm staying up late. But I don't get to have the luxury of laying in because Liz, Indiana's no. up, but like, you know, half five, six, Lizzie's off, off and out to work. The latest I can really get up is about half seven. Yeah, no, I got I need to properly sort it because it's just fucked. But, uh, so I'm it's still up. There. It's all right. Um, yeah, so I'm still up and about. But I suppose when I go away in the next week, I will probably get more into a sort of routine because... You'll be going to bed early. I'll be going to bed, not, you know, at a reasonable <coughs> sort of time, I guess, and get up early, you know? Yeah, man. So maybe that will shake some sort of routine back into me. Um, oh man, it is getting very hot in my kitchen right now. I am my sweating well. a lot. Yeah. So I'd probably say it brings us to the end of the episode. We covered a lot there. I think we um, had a, that was a good one. Yeah, that was a really good. I enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. I am, I am. I am hoping maybe pedo like, trolls. Pedo trolls. Uh, um, the pedo the trolls. Of, <laughs> pedo trolls. The origins of famous sayings. <laughs> pedo trolls. That's so good. Um, I am hoping that not not that's one. This has been working absolutely great, and I'm happy to continue this way. But I am hoping there will be an opportunity in the near future where we can, you know, one of us has an option, an, an option of having a free house. It'd be great to have you over here one night, when, face to face. When, yeah, like, man. You know, if, not not Lizzie and Indiana go out for all night, but if that ever happened, it'd be great to have you around here, record properly, chill out, order one of those awesome pizzas. But we'll see. Those Do times, those times will come. Um, but yeah, everyone, thanks for listening. I have been. Uh, I have been Greg biting the bullet Armstrong. <laughs> I've been Joe Pedo Troll Jackson. <laughs> hey, I see, I was going to go for that, but I knew you'd I want it. I said Jackson. I knew you'd want it. I knew you'd want that Jackson. one, so I left it. I left it for you because I'm a good man. Thanks, man. I was, yeah, you usually steal the good one and I'm stuck. I'm just, like, uh, 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 just go with uh, Joe. Uh, oh, I'm losing it. Ah. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been episode 134. Bye. Toodle. The All Seeing Guys podcast is part of Podnose, the UK's leading independent entertainment podcasting network. For episode archives of The All Seeing Guys and all of the shows on the network, visit us at www.podnose.com. You can also follow us on Twitter via at Podnose or send us an email via admin at podnose.com. Podnose.